Good morning. Thank you for joining us for our live coverage of the hatch opening of Starliner spacecraft. You're getting a live look inside the International Space Station Flight Control Room. The teams here are getting ready to open the hatches to the brand new spacecraft uh, that attached itself to the International Space Station last night at 7.28 p.m. Thank you for joining us. Uh, we are uh, right now following along as the crew are working through their procedures to open up the hatch uh, at the uh, uh, International Space Station side and the Starliner side. I'm NASA's Gary Jordan, joined by Rebecca Regan of Boeing. Thank you for being here, Rebecca. It's really great to be here. You know, it has been quite the journey for Starliner to get to the International Space Station. And last night, Steve Stitch described the spacecraft as patient. And I think we're seeing that come into play today, too, because it's been at the International Space Station for a couple hours now and uh, really ready to welcome the astronauts aboard for the very first time. I think what's really exciting today is that we're going to see live views of the International Space Station crew members uh, getting ready to open the hatch. And then we'll also be able to bring some live views from inside the Starliner for the first time. Which we are seeing now. What you're seeing is a live view from inside the Starliner spacecraft. No one is inside, but that is the anthropometric uh, um, uh, test device uh, called Rosie. Uh, Rosie is seated inside the Starliner right now. You can see the hatch is closed. We're going to be covering the operations to get that hatch open. And the astronauts of the International Space Station inside to formally welcome Starliner to the International Space Station. Now getting live views from inside the station. You can see NASA astronauts Chell Lindgren on the far end of the camera. Uh, so, sort of closer to frame is uh, NASA astronaut Bob Hines. Uh, the two of them are working through the procedures at the very forward end of the International Space Station. At the back end of that hatch is the Starliner spacecraft. Uh, they're working through their procedures to get what's called the A-pass hatch or the uh, um, uh, the hatch that's on the station side open. There's a vestibule in between the uh, station side hatch and the uh, international um, the star, uh, Starliner hatch. Uh, so they're going to be working to get those two hatches open here momentarily. station uh, from node 2. Uh, we are in step 5.4. Five-minute clock is started. Copy. Five-minute clock started. So you just hear, uh, that was uh, NASA astronaut Chell Lindgren, who's on the forward end of the frame right now, reading the procedures out loud to Bob Hines, uh, uh, NASA astronaut in the back working on the A-pass hatch. The, um, what has happened up to this point is there is a, a, a space in between the two hatches called the vestibule. Um, the vestibule itself has been at vacuum for quite some time. To get ready to open up the hatch, they need to bring that vestibule up to the same pressure that they're experiencing right now, uh, the same pressure that you would experience uh, on sea level on Earth, so about 14.7 pounds per square inch. Uh, that has been brought up to pressure, so right now the vestibule is pressurized. Uh, they're just performing a leak check uh, and uh, to check the stabilization of that pressure. 
once they get word that the the, the pressure is stable on the inside, uh, they'll get the go from the teams here in Mission Control Houston uh, to open up that hatch. Now you see a lot of storage bags uh, surrounding the inside of the area that leads down to that uh, what's called a pass hatch uh, that's the hatch on the station side those bags are filled uh, you can see with some padding as part of the hatch opening procedures the the hatches themselves are made out of a, a me metallic alloy uh, so they need to be um, uh, they need to be covered with some special padding just really as a safety measure uh, just in case anyone uh, bumps up against it, there, there, that extra padding provides uh, easy navigation between the hatches once they're open. Station Houston on two for Chell. Chell, wanted to let you know the whine or the noise, the background noise you hear on Space to Ground Two is hardline CST coming into Space to Ground Two. We are going to uh, deconfigure that until you guys are ready to go in, and then we'll re-enable it, and then you're going to do some uh, reconfigurations on the CST com panel. Copy, thumbs up. That was uh, International Space Station uh, Capcom, Rob Hayhurst. Uh, we're laying up to the crew. There is a hum on the space to ground. We're, we're pushing it down for our, uh, for our viewers that are watching our coverage today uh, as they work uh, to make sure the hum on space to ground too. Um, uh, th th it's it's uh, being caused right now by a certain configuration with the Starliner spacecraft, but they're looking into it. Right now, there's no hum, uh, so they'll confirm that. In the meantime, uh, you can see uh, some of the bags that were referenced on the outside of the pressurized mating adapter uh, contains some safety goggles. Now, being that this is a brand new spacecraft, um, the safety goggles are a protective measure, including masks. You can see they're about to don the masks right now. Uh, as they open up the hatch, uh, this protects the astronauts against any what's called FOD, uh, foreign object debris. Now, because the Starliner spacecraft is not inhabited and there's no one on the other side of that spacecraft, this is uh, more more so a safety measure, uh, just uh, uh, as the astronauts open up the hatches to a brand new spacecraft with limited insight uh, as to what's inside. These are standard safety measures uh, that are exercised for any visiting vehicle that's uh, uh, approaching the International Space Station. You would see this uh, as a common practice for any of the uncrewed cargo vehicles that regularly fly to the International Space Station.
station on two from node two for the APAS hatch. With you on two, John. Okay, we have uh, used the uh, tool to open the hatch. Valve is still open. A um, little bit of difficulty opening it, so I think the hatch seals have not fully relaxed. We're going to wait uh, additional five minutes, if that sounds good to you. Joe, we like that plan. We're good with five more minutes. Okay, copy. So you heard that report from uh, Chell Lindgren uh, aboard the International Space Station. Again, if you're following our coverage, he's the one that's currently uh, upside down in this view in the far end. Near the hatch is NASA astronaut Bob Hines. The two of them uh, are working together on getting the first of two hatches opened uh, to eventually uh, go inside the Starliner spacecraft. This one's called the APAS hatch. It's on the uh, International Space Station side. And there's another hatch, of course, uh, the hatch to the Boeing Starliner itself. Uh, as part of the procedures to uh, open up both of the hatches. There's that area in between called the vestibule that needs to be fully pressurized. Uh, and through that, there needs to be some period of time for settling that pressure. Uh, the seals themselves, uh, you can hear, uh, need to be relaxed a little bit more. Uh, so they're just going to wait five more minutes to open up the hatch. Uh, now, uh, Rebecca, this is, uh, this is something that we'll see, of course, uh, very soon for uh, when we have crew inside Starliner for this particular flight test. We don't have any crew that we do, we do see rosy inside. Um, and so uh, we'll understand uh, very soon what it will be like uh, uh, when Starliner has crew inside uh, and th they're talking to each other on the loops uh, as they're opening up the hatches and going through these procedures. Yeah, everything that we are doing today is definitely setting us up for crew. In fact, the whole flight test has been about what will it be like when we have astronauts on board the next time we um, dock to the International Space Station. And you mentioned, um, you know, kind of what comes next after they get through uh, this vestibule, and that's where we will get to see the Starliner hatch. It's known as the IVA hatch, the intravehicular activity hatch, and uh, we'll get some views of them being able to open it, um, probably from the other side of the Mustang system. It's the video system that we have on board the Starliner. And so we might be able to see um, Chell or Bob's faces uh, through the hatch there, um, you know, through that camera. And uh, so what you'll see as they're opening that hatch is they are going to basically grab onto a latch and pull it um, lefty loosey about one and one quarter of a turn. Uh, and that'll be the way that they open up the hatch. And so hopefully we'll get to see that from the other side from within Starliner. Very good. And we are getting views inside the Starliner spacecraft now. You mentioned cameras. Uh, they're being routed through the umbilical connection that connects the Starliner spacecraft itself to the International Space Station. And we are seeing Rosie on the inside. She, of course, patiently waiting. You mentioned mentioned uh, patient being one of the key words here uh, for, for this mission. Uh, she patiently waiting for uh, Bob Hines and Cho Lindgren to go ahead and open up the hatch. Yeah, Rosie is patient, and uh, so is Sunny Williams. We're in the ISS flight control room today, and uh, we heard her remark, um, hey, move out of the way. So I think uh, Sunny and, and the rest of the crew that's been training with us is really excited to get into Starliner and fly it next. Uh, NASA astronaut Sunita Williams, she's here uh, right now um, as the Starliner expert next to uh, International Space Station uh, Capcom, Rob Hayhurst, who you see in the corner of the frame there. She, of course, has been training uh, for years on the Starliner spacecraft, working very closely with NASA and Boeing teams uh, on, the st on the Starliner systems. Of course, the hatch and hatch opening procedures she uh, very intimately familiar with, uh, as she will one day be on the other side of that hatch, where uh, in the same seats where Rosie is, and uh, uh, she'll be patiently waiting for the International Space Station astronauts to be going through these procedures, uh, hopefully, you know, n not uh, pushing Rosie out of the way. You talk about training, and um, I know that the crew aboard the ISS has been able to train on these uh, hatch open procedures with the Boeing mock-up trainer that's uh, here at Johnson Space Center, and they also have an opportunity 
to train on just a hatch. So we have a hatch within the simulator or the trainer, and then they also have a standalone hatch that they've been able to go through these procedures with. Fantastic. And as we're seeing live views from the International Space Station, uh, NASA astronaut Bob Hines has successfully opened up the APAS hatch. Again, this is the hatch on the uh, International Space Station side. There is the hatch on the other side, which, of course, we've been discussing is the Starliner hatch. You can see they're taking some photographs just to document the condition of the APAS hatch. Uh, you see Bob Hines with a flashlight uh, on the other side uh, inspecting the area in between the two hatches called the vestibule. They'll go through these procedures uh, and document the conditions before getting that go. And MCC, uh, CST, uh, station a pass hatch is open and uh, no condensation is seen. Houston copies, no condensation. And that's a good report from NASA astronaut Shell Lindgren, again, documenting the conditions of the A-pass hatch and the, and the uh, vestibule in between the two hatches. Uh, they'll continue to do so. Uh, they'll continue to inspect and, and document the conditions before uh, they get uh, a series of next steps to go ahead and open up, of course, uh, the Starliner hatch, which we, of course, are very patiently waiting for. And I wouldn't be surprised if we have to patiently wait a little longer. Uh, the crew will actually check the pressure of the Starliner capsule. Uh, they want to make sure that it's at zero pressure. It's really important. So they'll be turning uh, some knobs. Um, they can manually change the pressure of the spacecraft and get it to the right pressure before opening. And they'll be able to watch that through a gauge that's on the IVA hatch on the space station side. You can see uh, astronauts Cho Lindgren and Bob Hines working together to outfit the uh, A-pass hatch. He now has a protective cover that he's going to use. You can see uh, this is the side of the hatch that uh, the astronauts themselves will, whenever they pass through the hatch, that uh, protects the astronauts themselves from any nicks or bumps. Um, uh, really a protective safety measure uh, as they navigate between uh, the Starliner itself and the International Space Station. Good, Sam. For Staffer 5.7.2, ready to remove that wa wastewater QB on the UIP. There is a note there that's confusing me a little bit. It tells me or reminds me to remove it from the REC interface panel, not the station side UIP. 
only access to one QD, the other side of that hose disappears behind like a Velcro uh, as, um, caption tape barrier, and it's basically the QD that is right next to the N2 QD that I disconnected at the very beginning of this activity this morning. Just uh, I'm looking for confirmation that I'm looking at the right thing. Checking. The International Space Station, of course, a busy place. Uh, you see astronauts Chell Lindgren and Bob Hines here. Their duties for today on this Saturday is opening up the hatch uh, between the uh, Starliner spacecraft and the International Space Station. Uh, you see uh, coming into frame and sort of passing through is NASA astronaut Jessica Watkins. She'll be aiding with some of the... Uh, set up uh, procedures for setting up the cameras and getting ready for a formal welcome uh, ceremony that we'll perform with all Expedition 67 crew members here very shortly. The communications you heard on the space to ground was uh, Samantha Christopher Reddy. Of course, the space station is a very busy place, and even on a Saturday, she's got some work to do. Uh, she's working on uh, some maintenance of the oxygen generation system, uh, swapping out uh, some hoses. Gary, I think we'll see specifically for Starliner, some setup uh, for a duct system that'll um, push through air conditioned air into the spacecraft so that when the astronauts enter, um, there's nice clean air in there. Okay, fantastic. Yeah, that's the right one. Thank you. Houston and MCC CST on uh, two. We are in step uh, six decimal two, waiting for a go. And we have a normal handover of the video link from the International Space Station. You see this is the live view of the International Space Station flight control teams. Uh, they're working, they're helping uh, Lindgren and Hines through the hatch opening procedures and of course all of the uh, crew members aboard the International Space Station. We'll be regaining that video shortly. Yeah, Chell, Houston, CST down here. We are go for you to pick up in step six decimal two. And uh, we're going to have some deltas for you in this procedure, so once you get complete with step six, call us back. We're going to do some uh, audio panel reconfig before step seven. Okay, station copies, we're going for six decimal two, and we'll call you back uh, when we're complete with step six. Good read back, thanks. Station Houston Space Ground 2 for Jessica and AQM help. Go ahead on two. Hey, Jessica, we need your help to recover the lab AQM. Uh, we see it has gone offline. Um, we just need a repower from you. You can reference procedure 2, decimal 5, decimal 071. And this is to recycle power on the lab AQM1, which is in lab deck two, serial number 1007. Okay, I copy all. Uh, repowering the lab AQM1 uh, in the deck two location, serial number 1007, and uh, referencing procedure 2.5.071. That's in work. Good read. And uh, Houston, two for uh, the OGA activity. Go ahead, Sam. I disconnected that QD, uh, the uh, wastewater uh, line. However, it, I had to reconnect it. It's leaking uh, quite significantly. Okay, copy. Significant leak, and you reconnected it.
So you hear uh, Samantha Christopher Reddy uh, on board the International Space Station working through some of the maintenance steps and troubleshooting uh, the oxygen generation system. Uh, everything looking good on that end, though. She'll continue to work through her steps. In the meantime, we'll focus on uh, Chell Lindgren and Bob Hines. You see them at the forward end of the International Space Station. Station Houston 2 for Sam. Um, I'm sure you're already doing this. You go ahead and clean up the water. We estimated it was 280 milliliters that leaked, and this was potable water, so uh, no concern with the type of water it is. Okay, understood. Yes, I, I clean up. And we're working on... Uh, instructions. Yep, we're working on uh, um, an additional follow-up on how to mitigate this leak. Okay, thank you. And NCCCST uh, for step six decimal two. Good. All right, we uh, opened IVA hatch equal equalization valve number one um, with a very minimal airflow. We read the uh, hatch pressure gauge at uh, 0 0.8 at this time. Okay, copy that. And to be clear, um, we opened the equalization valve that is across um, or opposite the uh, handle, uh, the, the hatch handle. The latch unlatch handle. And uh, so understand that we need less than uh, 0 0.5. Uh, do you want us to wait or continue? Yeah, we're we're talking about a ten by one. Got a copy. So you just heard that the crew is continuing to monitor the pressure of the Starliner spacecraft. Uh, they have turned those dials and are watching the pressure gauge and then hearing from flight control teams that they need to wait a little bit longer before they can go inside the Starliner. For the ISIL valve that you guys operated, it was the one at the uh, like ISS deck on the opposite side of the latch handle. Uh, so it'd be at about the six o'clock if you're looking at the hatch. Yeah, that way, towards the deck. It's on the it's on the flat side of the hatch. That's that's the one we we intend to open. The one on the deck is the uh, towards the deck is the one that we actuated, and uh, we, we were unable to find numbering uh, for IMV one and two, so we just used the. Uh, um, the video to identify which one was IMV1. Okay, copy the report, stand by. Once we get to the right pressure on the Starliner spacecraft, the next step. Uh, 
And uh, Chell Houston for the uh, the hatch differential pressure gauge. Can you give us another reading? Houston for CST. The needle is on the um, edge of the uh, green range, between the green range and the white range. So looking at the numbering, it looks like it's uh, 0.7 or 0.8. All right, copy that. Thanks for the report. And station Houston for Starliner Hatch. Uh, we're happy with that reading based on the other telemetry we have here about the pressure equalization. So you're go to pick up with the CST hatch opening. Okay, copy go to open the CST hatch. All right, looks like they have a good pressure reading on the Starliner spacecraft, and the crew is go to open the hatch. As I mentioned, they will grab that latch bar. They'll turn it uh, one and one quarters of a turn to the left. Um, you know, the vehicle is in space, so there could be this uh, phenomenon known as su suction cup effect. And so they might have to, you know, turn that latch just another quarter of a turn to give it some more force. And then the hatch itself also has uh, two sort of kicker plates. And you could sort of think about that as like built-in butter knives on a pickle jar. Um, they also have the opportunity to use a tool, uh, kind of a standalone um, butter knife type tool, uh, if they need to just release that pressure just a little bit to uh all right and it looks like the hatch is open to the starliner we're getting uh bob hines is the first uh astronaut to enter starliner in orbit successfully opening up the hatch this view coming from the starliner itself That hatch opening time was 11.04 a.m. Central Time. Hey, Chell, Farmer, Houston, uh, if you can, just a reminder for the uh, PPE for uh, ingress. Very cool to see uh, from inside the Starliner as that hatch opened. Yeah, for Farmer, can we just get them reminded that uh, we need PPE on, just get the goggles down. Thank you. So as the hatch was opened, you may have noticed uh, that there's actually no hinges on the IVA hatch. So the crew basically can grab onto two handles and sort of push it into place inside the Starliner spacecraft. From there, they're going to position it into a location for storing, strap it into place. 
And one of the next procedures that they've got is they're actually going to latch the other hatch, uh, the hatch that they the crew would enter uh, if they were going to be launching on the Starliner just for precautionary purposes. That would be done, obviously, if there were a crew riding up on Starliner, uh, but this time around the, the International Space Station astronauts will be doing that. We did see that side hatch open uh, when we saw some of the video of some of the teams out at the launch pad uh, prepping the Starliner, and uh, that's the that's the hatch that's being referenced. That that hatch on the side. This, of course, being the the forward hatch now open, 11:04 a.m. Central Time. You can see uh, Chell Lindgren peeking through. Of course, Bob Hines was the first astronaut to enter the Starliner in orbit. Uh, they're wearing their personal protective gear as part of a standard safety measure as they enter uncrewed spacecraft. They'll be the f being the first humans to enter. Uh, just make sure there's no FOD or foreign object debris uh, surrounding getting crystal clear uh, high definition views from uh, the cameras inside Starliner. They have uh, cameras in hand to document uh, uh, the condition of Starliner. Those images will be sent down to uh, teams here on the ground uh, to analyze, uh, to see the condition of the Starliner as these humans are the first to see it uh, from the inside in orbit. Starliner is equipped with four cameras uh, inside the cabin. So we're seeing the IVA hatch camera. We saw the rosy views, uh, and that is uh, basically looking at the commander seat. There's also one that shows a view of the whole cabin. And so you might be able to see the gravity indicator a little bit better in that view. And that is Jebediah Kerman from the Kerbal Space Program. And then we also have an out the window view, uh, which is really cool to see. And, and we've captured a lot of that on the, the ride up and through this operation. And we will capture more on the return to Earth and hopefully be able to share that with the public. And we're getting a new view now. Uh, as you mentioned, Rebecca, four cameras inside uh, the Starliner spacecraft. We're now getting a view of uh, Chell Lindgren, Bob Hines, and Rosie the Rocketeer, uh, all in the same shot. Uh, you can even see the zero-g indicator there in the back. Rosie is definitely representative of the entire team that's been working toward this moment. Um, you know, Rosie's motto is, we can do it, and she definitely did it, and so did the Starliner. This uh, view of Rosie, you can see she's wearing a polka dotted um, mask and uh, bandana. And that was actually sewn by May Cryer. She was an original Rosie the Riveter uh, for Boeing during World War II. So it's nice to see the fruits of her labor be able to go up to space too. You know, I mentioned May Cryer um, having uh, sewn together this bandana, bandana and mask, and you can see here she actually signed it um, and left a little note for the Starliner team, and um, we'll be looking forward to getting this back to her or any organization that she chooses to send it to uh, when it returns to Earth and to the moon and the stars, is what May Cryer said. 
Fantastic. And of course, uh, Rosie the Rocketeer now in orbit uh, with the Expedition 767 crew. Uh, of course, uh, the hatch uh, is open. 11.04 a.m. Central Time was that open time. Uh, we'll have a formal welcome ceremony uh, here in about 50 minutes. Uh, so we're targeting uh, noon Central Time to start that. Uh, but on two from uh, CMA2. Go okay, ahead, ciao. You're looking for the side hatch handle retention strap, and uh, farmer's gone from one end of the post insertion bag to the other. And we have an HLA restraint and an IBA re hatch restraint. For either of these, uh, that's uh, the restraint we're looking for. Yeah, Chell, it's uh, the HLA restraint is the one y'all are looking for. Okay, copy, HLA restraint, thank you. The other restraint that you called out, you're going to need that a uh, little later in the procedure. The HLA restraint that they're talking about uh, with the crew is actually, um, you know, what's going to be put over that side hatch that we mentioned earlier. Uh, just a precautionary measure because there's no crew on board to have um, latched that into place uh, before launch. They're going to go ahead and take care of that here. And, and that'll just keep them safe, you know, as they're moving about the cabin. They're going to have a number of things that they'll be doing aboard the space station, charging tablets, removing cargo. So just a precautionary me measure that they're going to go ahead and put that restraint on. We are getting a really great view of Rosie's co-pilot, Jebediah Kerman, and the background there is, you know, the program um, has been through, uh, you know, a journey uh, to get here, and uh, some of our um, engineers actually learned orbital mechanics on the Kerbal Space Program, and so they asked if we could go ahead and fly up Jebediah on this flight. The other thing that we're seeing in view here is some patches on Rosie, and so uh, the one on the left is the Orbital Flight Test 2 patch. Uh, that is um, a patch that was designed uh, with our teammates in mind, and um, on it is uh, a thumbprint. And the, the whole purpose behind that, or the symbol behind that, is that everyone has had you know, a hand in creating this, um, this vehicle and getting it to where it is today.
On the left-hand side of the screen, you can see Chell uh, working with the IVA hatch that was uh, moved out of the way to get into um, you know, the Starliner spacecraft. And so uh, in a couple minutes, they'll be going ahead and stowing that in its proper location and restraining it inside the Starliner. Now inside the Starliner is uh, NASA astronauts Bob Hines and Shell Lindgren. You can see at the end of the node uh, two forward hatch. So this is, uh, there's three hatches that you have to pass through from inside Starliner to get into the International Space Station. You got the IVA hatch, which is the Starliner hatch, the A-pass hatch, and then the uh, node two forward hatch. At the end of node two is uh, cosmonaut Denis Matveyev. Uh, he will be joining the other cosmonauts and the rest of the uh, Expedition 67 crew uh, later. We're looking at the top of the hour, noon central time, to formally welcome uh, Starliner to the International Space Station. In the meantime, the crew, of course, are focusing on uh, the procedures to get the hatch secured and uh, some closeout procedures inside Starliner. They'll revisit uh, more uh, procedures later, uh, performing some tests with the uh, communications, uh, C2V2, uh, common communications for visiting vehicle systems on both sides, uh, but uh, we will have some time to uh, formally welcome the Starliner's arrival and the hatch uh, opened uh, now that astronauts are inside uh, the crew spacecraft. Station for CST. Go ahead. Okay, side hatch handle retention strap has been, uh, um, has secured the hatch handle. We've taken photos. Uh, we see no particulates for doffing PPE, and uh, the IVA hatch seals uh, all look great, and uh, we're uh, ready to proceed into step seven. Okay, Chell, yeah, I think, uh, so the next operation on your timeline takes you to part four, which has got a few more step six steps in it. So you can you can complete those and give us a call back when you're done. Yep, and I see that now. Uh, so we are stepping into six decimal three. Roger. So you heard that excellent uh, report from the crew. The, as part of their procedures to open up the hatch, it's not just opening up and getting inside, right? They had to wear that protective gear uh, just to protect for any particulates or foreign object debris that was inside. Uh, and they were did an inspection of the hatch, and they were, of course, looking for the straps to seal uh, some of the hatches. Good reports all around. The hatch looks good, uh, no particulates. So you see they doffed or removed uh, the protective gear, including masks and goggles that they were wearing. Uh, they're continuing with some of those closeout procedures, including uh, photography and, in fact, uh, maybe a little bit more fun on the fun side as well. They were taking uh, uh, photos of the zero-G indicator and Rosie, uh, but they'll work, work through these procedures for some time. Uh, that's, that's most of their timeline today to uh, work on the uh, Starliner spacecraft. Gary, you mentioned the crew having a little fun taking pictures um, of the zero-G indicator. So again, that is um, Jebediah Kerman from the Kerbal Space Program. And um, you know, part of that game is uh, learning through some failures or learning through some challenges. And I do think that that sums up what we've been able to do with the Starliner. We have learned through some challenges and gotten to the space station. Um, it did take some time, and the Starliner spacecraft had to wait patiently.
Looks like uh, Chell wants to take center, center stage on this, but of course uh, that takes the priority. Uh, they, they have, uh, they're doing a full inspection. You can see him looking at some of the display and control panels. Uh, you can see uh, Denise Matveyev, uh, one of the cosmonauts, helping out. Uh, so so it's, it's taking a full crew complement. They're working through to make sure the Starliner is in tip-top shape. Of course, we'll formally welcome them later, uh, but, but it is good to see uh, not only the, the, uh, the, the international crew uh, of Expedition 67, but of course, uh, Rosie the Rocketeer and Jebediah, uh, a full crew complement to, to, to see this image here uh, as we have uh, the Starliner on orbit and on the International Space Station. Really nice uh, to see that many crew members inside the Starliner. Uh, the next time the Starliner flies, that's likely what we'll be seeing. So, of course, the uh, crew working through their procedures uh, to get Starliner ready. Uh, they're checking out some of the various systems. You saw they were getting some straps. Uh, as we get these fantastic views from inside the Starliner spacecraft, you're seeing sort of the lighting conditions change on the inside. There are multiple windows uh, inside the Starliner spacecraft. There is one right above the head of uh, Rosie the Rocketeer. Now, the International Space Station right now is uh, 261 statute miles over Western Africa in an orbital daytime. Uh, so what you're seeing in that change of scenery is the sun uh, as we are in an orbital daytime. Uh, we will enter into more of an orbital darkness and get uh, into an eclipsed phase where the sun is uh, blocked by, uh, by the Earth itself as the station orbits. And you'll see those lighting conditions change even more. Yeah, great view out the window for the commander. So you probably want the commander seat if you're going to be riding the, uh, the Boeing Starliner. Looks like they might be checking out the the console of the Starliner spacecraft. Um, certainly different than the Space Shuttle era spacecraft. Uh, compared to thousands of switches and dials, you've got about a dozen. Uh, and then you've got electronic displays that show you what the Starliner's up to.
I'm sure it's um, you know really incredible for some of the teammates on our crew and cargo accommodations team to be able to see these astronauts maneuvering about the cabin. You know, you can only do so much uh, when they're on the ground. And so being able to see them use the handlebars and maneuver around that spacecraft, uh, you know, and, and the cargo still in the place that it was packed in, I think is probably um, going to make them very happy. So you see the crew uh, now, this is the IVA, the intervehicular uh, hatch. Uh, this is the Starliner hatch. It is a free-floating hatch, not on a hinge or anything. Um, but they did uh, find the hatch cover. You can see they're covering it now. And that hatch weighs about 100 pounds, uh, but in zero G, that doesn't really matter. It's uh, just a little bulky to move around, but not heavy in any way. We're also getting a good view uh, from this camera angle. Again, there are four cameras uh, on the inside of Starliner. We've seen uh, now three of them. Uh, very lucky to be seeing this as they work through their uh, procedures to cover that free-floating hatch. But we're also getting a good view of the 800 pounds of cargo uh, that Starliner brought up with it. There's 500 pounds of NASA cargo and supplies. Uh, and. Uh, the part of the procedures that the crew will work through over these coming days, of course, this is a flight test and they have a lot of test objectives to get through, but there will be uh, some time spent on cargo transfer, getting some of that cargo on board the International Space Station and then bringing cargo into Starliner uh, to return some things home, including some nitrogen oxygen uh, recharge system tanks that provide uh, breathable air uh, to the environment of the International Space Station. Starliner will be bringing home three of those. The other thing that they're going to be looking to recharge uh, aboard the Starliner is the Starliner's batteries. Um, a couple other things that they will be doing is conducting audio checkouts between the Starliner and the ISS, uh, the Starliner and Mission Control um, here in Houston. And um, they're also going to be, again, planning for a daylight landing. Uh, that's something we really want to do when we return uh, to Earth is land in the daylight.
You see floating in view here the cover uh, of the IVA hatch, and the material is actually known as Nomax. Um, it's the same material that they um, actually make spacesuits out of. Um, it's really important that any material that goes in the Starliner is space rated, doesn't off gas, um, can't catch fire, things like that. So um, you can also see the cargo bags uh, there. Those are also made of Nomex material. And inside that cargo, those cargo bags um, is about 500 pounds for NASA, uh, crew supplies, food and such. Uh, and then we've got some um, good surprises for our Starliner teammates when they return. Um, also uh, 14 flags and pennants from historically black colleges and universities throughout the United States that Boeing has partnerships with. Copy no action for the caution. As this IVA hatch is moving about the cabin here, you can see some of those items that I was talking about that we couldn't really see in view as they were doing their operations to open the hatch. But there are those um, those valves uh, to, you know, um, uh, move the pressure uh, in the Starliner spacecraft and then the gauge and then also the latch opener um, itself. Right now, we are also seeing two seats inside the Starliner spacecraft. Starliner was actually designed to be able to carry uh, a mix of crew and cargo, up to seven passengers to any destination in low Earth orbit. For NASA missions to and from the International Space Station, though, uh, we can configure it with five seats and, um, and cargo to make up those uh, other two slots. Um, and so for post-certification missions, we would be carrying four NASA astronauts, and we've got that fifth seat as a um, place for additional cargo. Or, or maybe another passenger um, that's um, outside of, of NASA's uh, international partnership.
We're in a short handover now, so you're seeing a live view of the International Space Station flight control room. These handovers are expected to be short during these uh, uh, cargo operations and, and uh, closeout operations, the hatch cover uh, operations. So uh, we'll be regaining those views shortly. But in the meantime, you're getting a look at the International Space Station uh, flight control teams. They're uh, w walking the uh, space station crew themselves through the procedures that they're undergoing now uh, with the photography uh, and, and getting Starliner ready. Uh, we are tracking to start uh, that uh, welcome ceremony with all seven Expedition 67 crew members here at the top of the hour, so stay tuned for that. In the meantime, we'll continue to provide live views uh, of, of some of their procedures uh, as we get ready for that formal welcome. And this is the International Space Station control room. Uh, nearby is the Starliner flight control room, and that was obviously buzzing yesterday as they were working through docking procedures. But overnight, it was pretty quiet. They weren't working any issues with the Starliner. The Starliner itself was quiet, and so that enabled us to move forward with Hatch Open today. So you can see behind the crew working there, um, we mentioned the Starliner seats, and those tan parts of the Starliner seats are actually 3D printed inserts. And every Starliner astronaut who flies will actually get their own 3D printed insert uh, so that it is like perfectly you know, fit uh, for their body, providing them a really comfortable ride to space.
Those cargo bags that you're seeing are actually known as CTBs, crew transfer bags, or sorry, cargo transfer bags. Uh, the blue ones are actually um, those mementos that I mentioned. Those are Boeing bags. And then the white ones are the NASA transfer bags. And so those will be the ones that are coming off of the Starliner and going into the International Space Station. Station Houston Space Ground 3 for Jessica and PAO event. Head on three. Hey Jessica, we did not put a scene and voice check on the timeline today, but we, when you are ready with all your configs, we would like to do a quick one. Hey Farmer Houston on the big loop, if you can hear me in the Starliner, give us a wave. Thanks. Starliner Houston, space to ground two uh, for the hatch. We see it uh, moving around quite a bit. We'd like to get that secured uh, so it, so it's not being uh, it's not as free floating there. So suggestions are either tighten the straps or find a different cargo puck to change the angle so it's uh, easier for the hatch to be retained there against the wall.
We mentioned uh, cargo that was flying up in those Boeing blue bags, and so you can see here uh, those flags and pennants from uh, 14 black, uh, historic, historically black colleges and universities uh, from the United States. Uh, also uh, going up are Rosie the Riveter coins. Uh, you can see there, we can do it. And that uh, really is about our commitment um, to equity and inclusion at Boeing. You also saw some uh, tree seeds, um, kind of interesting fun fact there. Um, in 1971, astronaut Stu Rusa took about 500 seeds uh, from five different species of trees around the moon with him on Apollo 14. And that is loblolly pine, sycamore, sweet gum, redwood, and Douglas fir. And there's our uh, crew and cargo and accommodations team um, packed with love for sure. Jessica, yes, the floater camera is the one we want the scene and voice check on. And look. Houston on three, sorry for another camera question, but looks like we've got the node two number one and two set up in node two, but you'd like us to take one of those down and replace it with the floater cam? Checking. And thanks for keeping us honest, Jessica. Yes, uh, you can pick either one of those cameras in Node 2 to replace it with the floater cam. Yeah, I'm just on to, um, for this period of setup, I, I'm just trying to understand whether we um, are on the same page with the big. So I see Node 2 camera 1 set up on a bracket, and my understanding is that it's going to be the one for our group PAU at the beginning. And then Wadi also set up a floater that is connected to the long cable, which is the one that I assume is going to go into Starliner. And we are ready to give you a scene check on Node 2 number 1 and voice. And then I'm assuming just a voice check on the floater, since that is going to float into Starliner, or do you want the floater also to be set up in a particular position before we take it into Starliner? Checking. Station Houston on three for Sam. So the, the answer to that is the intention is for the entire event, what's going to happen in Node 2 and when we float into Starliner, it is all on a single camera on the floater cam. Okay, understood. Then uh, we are going to go ahead now and set up uh, the camera that is labeled floater that is connected to the long uh, cable on a bracket, and we'll give you a scene check and voice check on that one, the scene check being for the initial uh, group PAO before the twin Starliner, and then that same camera is going to be taken into Starliner. That is a good understanding.
And Starliner, Houston, on the big loop there. Uh, as far as the hatch goes, as far as the hatch goes, we wanted to offer up the use of some adjustable. All right, uh, Starliner Houston, I'm back with you after that little handover there. On two, uh, we see that the hatch is still sort of free-floating. We need to break over to the PAO event, which starts in about four minutes, and then uh, after which we'll, we'll address better securing it. We just uh, wanted to remind you to be mindful of that. And uh, station copies. I've tried both the uh, cargo pucks uh, locations. Um, cinching down the straps, I think we're just limited to Velcro, so uh, if not, uh, I need some instruction on how to do that. But uh, something to be aware of when we've taken photos is that the bumper that's on the uh, uh, the front side of the hatch uh, doesn't the, the hatch doesn't actually contact it at all. The uh, the hatch handle on the outside of the hatch actually hits the bulkhead, uh, and the hatch never makes contact with that bumper. Okay, copy that. We're we're going to talk about it. We're working on that some more, and then also uh, for seven decimal seven, the uh, IMV duct install is complete. Roger, thanks, Joe. You just heard a conversation between Capcom and the International Space Station crew members about that IVA hatch, and you now just another opportunity for us to learn about how uh, the vehicle and its hardware is operating in space and being able to incorporate those lessons learned before the crewed flight test. Houston on uh, two, we are ready for a uh, scene and voice check. Houston's ready as well. Station Houston on Space Ground 2. Uh, audio is good. Uh, the scene framing looks fine, but we see some icons on the display. If you could uh, toggle those off, uh, it would be a better frame. And Station Houston on 2-4, the, uh, the floater camera, we're still seeing all the uh, display items on the frame, and it's actually framing each person's face with a box. That's what we're looking to get off there.
Houston, uh, to us, the display looks like it always looks. So if, uh, if you have any steps for us to try and uh, change that setting, we'll have to do it. Copy. We're trying to get the right words. Do you stand by? And for the camera, uh, on the back side of the camera, there is a display button. If you could push that, we think that will get us uh, what we need. Done. And that was successful. Thank you. Wonderful. We're still looking at views inside the Starliner spacecraft as uh, the International Space Station astronauts are now inside the space station uh, getting ready for some welcoming remarks uh, for the, the Starliner spacecraft. Uh, first time in orbit and first time to dock to the International Space Station. While Starliner is docked to the space station, we mentioned that there will be a number of checkouts. They're also going to be transferring data uh, from the VESTA system, and that was that system that helped, uh, you know, Starliner autonomously dock to the space station. Um, they'll go ahead and initialize uh, Starliner's uh, GPS um, from the International Space Station state, and uh, they will also do a service module battery checkout. Uh, definitely something important to do uh, because the service module will not be coming back to Earth like the crew module will. So want to get as much data from that vehicle or that part of the vehicle um, as they can. They're also, as part of um, a flight test objective, uh, they're going to go ahead and test out the audio. Uh, so uh, space to, to ground loops um, inside the Starliner spacecraft. And so we'll be looking for that. Um, might happen while we're on the air today, could happen a little bit later in the flight. State Expedition 67, we are ready to begin the welcome ceremony when you are. Uh, Boeing Starliner, uh, welcome on board Space Station. Um, I have a lot of friends who works in uh, who work in um, Boeing, and I know how hard and uh, strong and no, but very it interesting to make a new ship. And we congratulations uh, Boeing uh, team and uh, ground control team with uh, this victory, uh, but maybe, maybe a small victory, no, but very important victory. And we wish um, Mike Fink or uh, Sanita Williams uh, with the uh, crew um, uh, will arrive uh, according uh, on, uh, on board space station uh, on the plan. Uh, hand over uh, to the lead. Yeah, uh, uh, well, uh, we had the, uh, the privilege and the honor of uh, watching Starliner arrive yesterday. Uh, we were able to acquire the vehicle uh, 12 to 15 kilometers out or so, and we got to watch it uh, all the way through. Uh, and it was uh, really spectacular uh, to, to see this, uh, this beautiful vehicle arrive uh, here yesterday. So uh, that was really special for us. Uh, parked out on the doorstep for a little while, uh, resolving some minor issues. but. Uh, those are the kinds of things we expect in flight tests, and that is why we that is why we do tests. If we didn't uh, find something like that, we're probably doing something wrong. Uh, so it was a, a 
highly successful mission yesterday. It was great to have Starliner on board, and uh, we, you know, have the opportunity to open the hatch and uh, and and just enjoy it uh, and and see the the new vehicle that uh, that is coming to uh, to station and bringing a new capability. Uh, back in uh, 2014, NASA uh, awarded the commercial crew contracts, and uh, and this is the day that they envisioned, where we have three human-rated. Uh, vehicles docked to the space station right now. Uh, so we have the Soyuz uh, docked on the MLM, uh, and then we have a Dragon right above us, and uh, and the Starliner right behind us. So this is a this is a momentous day uh, in NASA's history, and and just paving the way for the future as we uh, start enabling commercial flights here in low Earth orbit while NASA pivots to the Moon and eventually on to Mars. So it's just, uh, it's been a great day, but enough of us talking. Uh, we would like to take this chance to uh, bring all of you along with us and let you see what Starliner looks like up here uh, on orbit, docked to the very front of Space Station. So come along with us. Okay, you're traveling down uh, PMA-2, which is uh, where the docking adapters are on the very front of Space Station, and now you're entering into Starliner. So welcome uh, to Starliner for the very first time ever uh, in space. Uh, here you can see Starliner, and uh, Rosie the Rocketeer is sitting over in the commander's seat. Along with uh, her zero-G indicator, Ker uh, Je Jebediah Kerbal. Uh, she's got a great view out uh, her window over there, uh, and then on the uh, crewed vehicles, we'll actually have three other, uh, two other seats in here, uh, and then lots of room for cargo as well. So we hope you enjoyed uh, touring Starliner with us today, and uh, with that, we'd like to hand it back to Houston. Thanks a lot for being here. <laughs> And uh, Station Starliner Capcom, thanks for the great look inside this new spacecraft. Starliner team is glad to have come on board. The journey has been hard, but the reward is what we see today as our teams work together to meet the promise of advancement offered in low Earth orbit. This connection is the first of many that uh, will continue for years to come. No one goes to space alone, and we can all benefit from the efforts involved. Station, this is Houston ACR. Thank you. That concludes our event. Thank you to the Expedition 67 crew, Starliner and Capcom, for your remarks on this historic day in human spaceflight. The docking of Starliner to ISS represents the hard work and dedication of the NASA and Boeing teams. On behalf of those who built and operate Starliner and those who built, operate, and help support Station, welcome aboard. It's great to see these families together today, and we can't wait to get them together again soon to greet a Starliner crew. Station, we are now resuming operational audio communications.
All right. Uh, wonderful words from the crew. Uh, we got to follow a lot of the action today with the uh, NASA astronauts, uh, Chell Lindgren and Bob Hines, uh, enter into the Starliner. It was Hines who got to be the first human inside Starliner while it was in orbit. Uh, they worked through a lot of their procedures to get uh, the hatch covered, and uh, we saw them remove some, some cargo and get it configured. Uh, we saw the ducks go in so they can mix some of the air from the International Space Station itself. A lot has happened. And then, of course, we saw them formally welcome Starliner to the International Space Station. Great words from, from Bob Hines, who gave us those those peaks with Chell Lindgren. They floated that camera in. Spectacular views on the inside. We've been seeing really a lot of that throughout most of the day. And, of course, words from the Starliner Capcom uh, and from the International Space Station Capcom. Uh, so a lot has happened, Rebecca, to get us to this point. Uh, truly, uh, truly a moment to celebrate. Yeah, beautiful words um, from the International Space Station crew members. And we got a look at... Um, um, Sunny and uh, Mike Fink, um, who are training to fly Starliner, and you could see them getting a little emotional about it, and so it was really nice to see that, because um, they may be going up in it soon, and that was really what it's all about, is um, learning to fly so that we can fly crew. That's right. That's what we're leading to next. Now, of course, there's a lot of objectives that the teams are going to be working on to get uh, through uh, some of the testing that's needed during the docked phase. And then, of course, we're looking forward to uh, Starliner returning with about 600 pounds of cargo to Earth. Make sure you go to nasa.gov and check out the latest on our coverage for some of those activities. We'll be uh, sending out more updates throughout uh, all of next week uh, as we continue to monitor the conditions for landing and the times. So stay tuned with us there. In the meantime, that'll do it for us. Us here in Mission Control Houston. Thanks for tuning in.